Okay, so what is the difference between biological age and your chronological age? And how did they hmm. figure out that these markers indicate faster or slower aging? They've been able to connect the specific DNA sites that we're going to talk about here today with cardiovascular risk, with type 2 diabetes, with blood pressure, and with Alzheimer's. This is Mind Pump. All right, today's episode, we have our good friend, Dr. Stephen Cabral, one of the best functional medicine practitioners in the world. And today, he gives us the results of our biological age test. So this is a test that looks at many different factors uh, that will determine what your biological age is. And yes, it can be different than your chronological age. So you can, in this episode, figure out if I'm older or younger than my actual age. Same thing with Adam, Justin, and Doug. And Dr. Cabral talks all about the markers that they look at and how to make yourself younger than your years. It's pretty cool. Anyway, you can get yourself one of these tests at stephencabral.com forward slash bioage. Steven is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Today's giveaway on YouTube is MAPS PED. This program we rarely ever give out. Uh, but anyway, you can win it if you enter the contest. And here's how you do that. You leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it and you subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. We'll let you know in the comment section if you want access to that. Now, this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, 8sleep. They make a device that goes over your bed. It uses water to cool or warm your bed. And it also uses AI technology to check out your REM stages of sleep and adjust and adjust and perfect your night of sleep. Pretty cool stuff. There's nothing like this anywhere. Go to 8sleep.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get yourself a massive discount. Also, this month's sale, we have two very popular muscle building, strength building programs, MAPS Strong, MAPS Power Lift, both half off. You can find them both by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Dr. Cabral, welcome back. Now, this is going to be an exciting episode because we tested our biological age, right? This, the, what's the name of the test? It's, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a full name to it. It's like health span and biological age? Or? Yes, okay. biological age test. So there's multiple companies that run this right now, but there's only four that are legitimate, and we can talk about that. But um, I think this is going to be a really fun show. Probably one of the most fun we've had because there are actually winners to this lab. Like, who is aging the slowest? That's what we're going to look at. Okay. We'll, we'll see what, how fun this is going to be. What, yeah. <laughs> What's the, okay, so what is the difference between biological age and your chronological age? Like, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're 30 years old because you were born 30 years ago, and then your biological age shows something different. What is it showing? Yes. So you have your chronological age, which is, like you just said, literally the number of birthdays that you've celebrated, that you've been on this earth. And so it's also, that's why this is not the the best thing for your doctor to say, oh, your these disease is literally just a disease of old age. Okay. Well, maybe not because your chronological age, you can be, let's say 45 years old, but your biological age is what your body looks like for the average 30 year old or 45 year old or 55 year old. So your biological age can be three different things. The same as your chronological age lower than your biological age, which is what we want to strive for, or higher than your chronological age. Now, if it's lower, the biggest benefit is that you are literally aging slower. So let's say that you know the average individual, they live 74 to 77 years old in the United States, your goal would have a lower and slower rate of aging so that you would then naturally live longer. Okay. What are they testing to figure this out? Like, What are the metrics and how do they figure these out? So they're testing hundreds to hundreds of thousand methylation points on your DNA. So that's why when you run this lab, you are doing either a cheek swab typically, or you're doing a uh, blood collection. Okay. And then either one of those, they can take actually the white blood cells and they can look at the um, markers on that. And how did they hmm. figure out that these markers indicate faster or slower aging? How did they figure the, the correlate or the, the connection? And it, it hasn't been easy for them because I've been using these tests now for 15 years and it was so rudimentary 15 years ago. They, remember telomere testing? Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask well, you about telomere. Wildly length. inaccurate, like six to nine years plus or minus. Wow. Hmm. So imagine testing your body fat and they're like, yeah, it's six or six to nine plus <laughs> yeah. or minus. So like, <laughs> okay, so I'm either 12% or 20%. Like, or 6%. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that, something seems off here. So they've just continued to refine it over the years. And so two things I'll say is one, there's no golden, they call it the golden index yet. 
And that means like, this is the ultimate standard for how this test should be run. They're all running them kind of the same, but there's no golden standard. Now, the nice thing is that it's no longer six to nine years, plus or minus, it's around six to nine months. Whoa. And so even though it's not perfect, you're getting it like if you're 45 years old and it says you're 44 or well, you're doing better or it could be 46. So it's like, it's not that much because you can get a, say, if you're 45, you can, it can show that you're 54 or it could show that you're 35. So you know that you're on the right, uh, moving in the right direction. And they believe in the next three to five years, we'll have such good accuracy. It will be within 60 to 90 days maximum. Now, have they yeah. connected these markers and these tests to age-related symptoms like fatigue, insulin resistance, uh, bone, I mean, muscle loss, bone loss, like all the things that we that we can connect to aging, have they been able to connect these metrics to those types of symptoms? They've been able to connect the specific DNA sites that we're going to talk about here today with cardiovascular risk, with type 2 diabetes, with blood pressure, and with Alzheimer's, so dementia. Wow. And they actually hmm. give you a rating as to how likely you are to die from one of those or, or get one of those. And that's called the epimetabolic index. So it's a, it's a really, you want to be below a 6.3 and the lower, the better. So you have less chance, less risk for metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is basically high cholesterol, high triglycerides, mm -hmm. blood pressure, diabetes, like everything's off, all the markers. And um, the only thing that this test is not good at looking at is cancer. So you, it's not going to give, you can be a totally healthy individual with a lower biological age and still this doesn't look for cancer. So it's important. I just want to point that out because I like to be unbiased with this and just say, this isn't testing for that. Okay. So you might not know the answer to this, but I, I do know that they do testing with uh, biological organisms where they'll have, they'll put one out in a satellite and then they'll leave one here and they'll compare the aging because the faster something moves, you know, mm -hmm. through physics, the slower it ages. Have they made a leak? Is this what they use to measure whether or not something's aging slower or faster? Do you even know that? I don't know if that's what they use for that measurement, but highly likely because okay. this is the best way that we have to measure. But you're right. I mean, that they're actually looking at that for, and I, you know, I'll sometimes read articles and they're like, oh, okay, this is how we're going to get to Mars. This is how we're going to be able to do yeah. a, like longer travel is that the, the entity, the biological entity is going to age slower, but is there also a way that we could maybe, um, like freeze the individual, keeping them alive. Yeah. And then mm. when they arrive at whatever destination, we warm them back up literally and bring them back to life. So I think that that's fascinating. Um, mainly I, I'm on the testing end of it and I would love to see what that looks like. How successful have you guys been through your protocols at changing people's biological? And how often would you test yeah. like example, you know, like let's say your biological age is five years older than your, your chronological age. Well, how long would you need to wait with protocols to test again to see if you've made an impact? So I test myself every three to four months. We test clients in our practice every six months, four to six months maximum. And the reason is if we're looking at, um, again, not a perfect science, very good science, let's give it like a B plus. It's not in the A range. Age a range yet. We want to give the body enough time to adapt, which is typically three to four months to see change. And then we'll rerun that lab again, four to six months, and then we'll be able to see the change. We've been very successful at reducing biological age. And obviously I keep myself to HIPAA compliance and all that, but I will tell you when I first started running these labs, I had just opened my second practice in Boston. I had my, my child was a newborn at the time. I was getting very little sleep. I was not exercising as much as I should tons of stress, very little sleep. My rate of aging was well over a one, which means I was raging, aging faster than my chronological age. And my I was in my 30s at the time, and my biological age was in my early 50s. It was horrible. Oh, wow. Wow. And I said, okay, uh, this is bad. So <laughs> I already have a history of like health issues when I was much younger. And so I said, we, we need to do something now. So that's actually when I started this research about 12 years ago. And I said, I'm just going to study it and start to use it and then begin to implement it. And the fascinating thing is that the lifestyle changes have not changed at all, but the specialty things that we'll talk about here today are what is changing and will most likely, you'll be able to, we, our age right now, we will be able to reduce biological age by 20 to 30%, meaning ex I should say extend lifespan by 20 to 30% in our lifetime. Wow. wow. Now, have you been able to connect symptoms with the people you work with and their biological age reversing? In other words, they'll test six months later yes. and they're like, man, I feel yeah, way feel better or difference. I feel worse. Yeah. It's a great question. So in our practice, 
we do we focus on um so my background is actually has I started as an ACE certified personal trainer at 18 years old. Then I got NASM certified, then I got NSCA, CSCS certified and kind of worked my way up. And what I realized back in the day doing nutrition and personal training is that people's health issues went away if I got them in really great shape and gave them a good nutrition yeah. plan. I didn't know why, but it's because it's the cornerstone, right? And so in our practice, we we literally help people to transform their body to a healthy body weight for them. And if there's any wellness-based issues, we then fix those wellness issues. And then after that, we then work on anti-aging because it actually doesn't make sense to do all these specialty biohacks if you're not healthy, because right. what we've seen mm -hmm. is people with autoimmune issues and inflammatory based disorders, their biological age is quite high. And so they're like, should I start taking NMN or NR? Or I'm like, no, yeah. like we need to work on your gut health and your yeah. heavy metals and like all these things. Cause you don't need the icing on the cake. We literally need to bake the cake first. We need to create it before you can ice this. And so okay. that's what we do. You mentioned methylation. Would, can you explain what the, I hear a lot about that, how mm -hmm. people meth, are good methylators and bad methylators. And I have to take this type of folate or that type of folate because yes. of whatever, what is that? And why are they looking at that? So it's, it goes back to specific gene and what are called SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. So basically there is a amazing study. So most functional medicine doctors believe that maybe 5% to 10% of all disease is genetic, meaning like innate uh, genetic predisposition right. to something like not high cholesterol. I'm talking about cholesterol at 500 or 600, like off the charts, right? So that's that can be genetically based. Mm. But th beyond that, we're looking at what are called single nucleotide polymorphisms that then turn on or off these genes. And that's called epigenetics. So one mm. of those is the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase gene, MTHFR. So that's what we refer to it as. MTHFR is, it seems super confusing. The best way that I've ever found to try to be able to explain it and even learn it myself is that on your DNA, there are sites, specific sites. And if you think about a 400 page book, let's say you've read the book, you don't memorize all the 400 pages, but you actually marked the pages. You dog-eared them or put bookmarks in. The MTHFR, the methylation sites, are telling the DNA what to read, how to read it, and replicate appropriately for that next time the cells turn over. Okay. Does that make sense? It, it, it does. And so, um, and so knowing that, you can adjust certain supplementation or whatever mm -hmm. to help work with or whatever. And and also what you're more prone to. So we know if you have MTHFR, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So you can be, and you can have what's called 25% to 100% enzymatic activity of those methyl-based sites. Mm. That means some people, they have no, uh, there's something called homozygous and heterozygous, right? So if you're heterozygous, both your parents give you copies of the MTHFR specific gene. Mm -hmm. And heterozygous means one parent gave you, we'll call it a clean copy, and one had some type of a mutation where you're not able to, fo to, to absorb folate as well. And then if you're homozygous, that means both parents gave you um, specific MTHFR-based issues where you're anywhere from, you're only able to either convert 25% to maybe 70% uh, of folate. And so that is why we say to people, uh, we love whole food nutrition. There's no doubt about that. We don't like synthetic B9 uh, folate, which is folic acid. But even from nature, you're not able to absorb folate and convert it to methyl folate as well. So there's a form of folate called 5-methyl methyl tetrahydrofolate, mm -hmm. which is very easily absorbed. It's what we absolutely recommend for every woman that's pregnant because she she's given folic acid, but she doesn't even know if she can use folic right. acid, right? For neural tube-based dysfunction, et cetera. So uh, we're big advocates of that, but folate also, this is the misnomer that you only need folate and you're good. No, it's actually trimethylglycine or betaine, it's called, uh, vitamin B12 as methylcobalamin and B6, which is typically paradoxal 5-phosphate, P5P, and then zinc, calcium, magnesium. So it doesn't live in a silo. Folate uses all of those to be able to methylate properly. Okay, so I, so what's interesting about this is, because this is obviously exists, it's a gene, right? And yes. people are going to have it or they don't. And I we keep learning about how certain, I don't know, learning um, differences or certain, like for example, sickle cell anemia, and it now connected to being resistant to malaria. So maybe it was a mutation to help people become resistant to sure. malaria. Are there any, any evolutionary benefits to having this gene? Like, do they know why this exists in the first? Because it all sounds bad, but if we have it, I wonder if there's a 
the reason why we have it. I don't know what the origins to that are. That is that is very fascinating. I know the origins of something we're going to talk about today, which is the uh, ApoE genotype, the yeah. allele, because it, uh, it, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but the ApoE genotype allele actually comes dates all the way back to Neanderthal-based times. Oh. And it's very rare to have it, but some people do. Um, so that to me is fascinating. I don't know how MTHFR actually came around. Now, before yeah. we came on the show, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll just share this now. You did mention that this test does test those two things, the APO, what is it called? APOE genotype. And yes. the MTF, MTHFR. HR. And you said, hey, you might not want to put these on air because mm -hmm. insurance companies may hear this and can alter your premiums because you have a higher rate of let's say Alzheimer's or whatever. Yeah. So, um, but this test does test those. It does. Okay. It mm. will tell you if you're more prone to cardiovascular issues, uh, how you metabolize fats. So meaning like we always talk about that cholesterol, there's no, it's no big deal. There's no issue. Or some people demonize cholesterol and say it's the worst thing in the world. Well, there's a specific genotype, the APOE genotype, and there are three, four or four, four specifically. And they don't process cholesterol as well, oh. especially dietary cholesterol, even though it only makes up a small amount of total cholesterol. So they actually would do better. They found on a little lower um, cholesterol saturated fat diet. Now that makes up 26% of the population. So 74% are typically okay with it, yeah. but that 26% sometimes gets lost and they get swept under the rug. So it matters for them. And then also if you have the three, four or four, four, specifically the four, four, which makes up about 4% to maybe 6% of the population, they're 93% more prone to getting Alzheimer's. Does that mean they're going to get Alzheimer's? No. It just means that they're more likely, they're more prone. Even if you're an APOE genotype 2-2, you could, even though it's protective, you could still get Alzheimer's. You're just far less likely. Now, I, 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 I heard or I read that creatine, the supplement creatine, is good for people who have methylation issues because it, it's a, either, either a methyl donor or allows your body to use to methylate better because it doesn't have to borrow from other places. Uh, are you familiar with no, this? No, I'd love, I'd love to be able to see that research. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. We, had, we had someone on to talk about that. All right. Huh. All right, cool. Yeah. So let's see. I want, I'm want. i interested to see how old we are All right. according <laughs> to these tests. And I might give you some pushback. Yeah. What because, it, so yeah, you, you mentioned you exactly. were you were 50 the first time you did it. How much have you been able yeah, to move yours? So um, this, this has happened over the last, so three years ago to four years ago, I really got uh, into this because the testing was much more, it was validated then. So now we're, okay, we have legitimate tests. Uh, we're able to do things that we yeah. know work. And so over the last three to four years, so well, we'll put it this way, 15 years ago, my rate of aging was a 1.16. My biological age, I believe was a 54. And at that time, I was about, it was in my early 30s. I'm about to turn 46 now. My biological age now is 32 years old. Wow. Wow. And my rate of aging is between a 0.67 and a 0.69 and 0.71. So those are my last three labs. Wow. So yeah. that is- um, Gives me hope. Yeah. It's yeah. Gives hope. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I was, a, I mean, I was, I was a disaster back then, even though I was healthy. Like I was healthy legitimately, but I was burnt out. Like yeah. my body was in Sleep and stress, and biggest factors for that? Biggest factors. Yeah. Tr sleep, stress- and yeah, chronic based disease, which is inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, 100%. wow. So there is hope if there's hope for me in my genetics because I have I have a lot of these issues that we're talking about. I won't say specifically, but yes, the MDHFR issues, the other issues, I have those. So I'm far more prone to inflammation. But it does show that if you dial these things in, and when I well, we'll talk about the things that work as well. And so what I want to share is that for you, it's actually it, this all comes down to bioindividuality. What works for me is going to work for you, but maybe not at the same level. Got it. Mm -hmm. You may be able to work out harder than me because your body allows for that more than mine might, right? Or some people, they can run five or six miles or half marathon. The body holds up really well. Like I know some people that are just great runners. Their parents were great runners. They're great runners where other people, they get so inflamed, they feel terrible. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs these things. It's just a varying levels and you have to find the right level for you. And that's why the testing is very helpful. All right. All right. All right. So let's dive right into it. We talked about already, we're going to go, we explain what the MTHFR is. We explain what the APOE genotype is. Um, there's basically six combinations. We won't read yours, but I'm happy to answer more questions. What we are going to go over is the biological age that we spoke about. Biological age could be the same as your chronological age, could be higher, which or means lower. you're aging faster, could be lower. Then we're going to go over what is called the male index or the sex index. It looks at how did you rank compared to all men who took this test. Oh, God. And they You're typically separated right out. And what we, are they ranking, Dr. Cabral? Uh, actually, <laughs> I'm glad that they, I'm, actually, it's good that you jogged my memory on that too. Because here's the thing. They're not ranking all of the United States. They're actually ranking 
pretty healthy people because who, who takes take this the test? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's a little skewed. Like mm. it's not against you and the entire world. It's you and like your peers, people who that makes are you feel a little bio. bit better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, just a little bit. Just a not comment, a lot. Yeah. Just a comment on the higher rates of things like Alzheimer's stuff. You know, that's also in the context of what they found for people who live a modern life, right? So maybe with this gene variance, mm -hmm. your rate of Alzheimer's ninety three percent higher. But they're testing people who have this gene variance who also live in a modern life and maybe live modern lifestyles. So in other words, there's a lot of yes. hope. Okay. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay. And that's why, again, if I work with plenty of people in my practice that are either 3-4 or specifically a 4-4, and we just say, here's the, so I want to put people's mind at ease. The technology and advancements in testing right now will let you know if you're going to get Alzheimer's 10, 20, 30 years ahead of time. Wow. So one, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, um, and that is a full body MRI. Yeah, and mm. it's a non contrast, so you're not getting the radioactive dye put in your body. We just talked about this, yeah. and it's so I have these ten tests. They're called the ten vitality tests or ten mortality tests. If you want to look at it from a negative perspective, but if you run them on an annual basis, you will not be like there will be no heart attacks at random, elevated blood see pressure. It way before. Yeah, or cancer, anything. It literally looks at cancer the size of a grain of rice. It's going to look at Alzheimer's in the brain before all, but when it's just developing. Hmm. And so the nice thing is nobody has to fear Alzheimer's. We can run this brain scan. If your brain is clear, then you can wait a couple of years and, and run it again if you'd like. So anyway, full body MRI, I can't recommend it enough. Is it inexpensive? No, it's not. But um you know, these are things that I think are worth investing. I think we in. found one up here in the area. It's like twenty five hundred bucks or three thousand, which is yeah. not bad for yes. something like this. Two thousand to twenty five hundred is typically the going rate, and get them for a little bit less when they're doing specials. And that's for the full body. And then if there's no issues with the brain, you can go back and just do a torso scan once a year, and that's like a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars, and this. that will look for mm -hmm. cancer. I definitely yeah. recommend it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually just ran mine about a year ago. Okay, so we'll look at the biological age, uh, the rate of aging, the uh, DNA index. That's it. All okay. Right, we'll get started. So I am going to, I'm going to rank order you because I, I want to have a little fun with this. Right. Here today. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go with the fastest rate of aging, okay. highest biological age relative to their current age. And then we'll go to, to whoever the, the winner is here specifically. Oh, yeah. And, um, I'm the big loser on that one. Oh, these, this, this didn't, I have to now do the math in my head now. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's me. All right. Uh, it is Adam. Yes. So uh, oh, you are correct. Man. Do you mind if I give, do you guys mind T if I give tell your them everything. chronological let them, age? Let them all okay. know how shitty I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's not. We'll it's, fix it. It's, it's, this is, is random like of said, me missing cheese here. So. I want you to know that like I, I picked up a pack of cigarettes and, and for Doug and I after we got these tests. <laughs> like, screw it, we're done. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's all over. That yeah. and just to calm your stress levels. You know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, chronological age is 42. And biological age is 49. Ugh. So that we get that plus seven right there. Mm. Um, your, now, what's weird about that is he's not any wiser than a typical. <laughs> that's yeah, it's, yeah. That's, that's, that's the thing. It can actually work so, in reverse. Yeah, yes. so bullshit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like no positives to this. There's no positives there, there, old man. Get your yep. shots in now. Yeah. <laughs> but this, this, so we'll look on the bright side. This will really be amazing, though, because you'll be able to see it go down if you follow yeah. these specific principles. Well, yeah, no, you listen to you. I mean, I'm excited now because of what you turned it around. If you can turn it around from 50 down to 30 something i feel confident i should be able to at least get below my age yeah, chronological yeah. or we're going to start advertising our sense of humor depends. is young as hell yeah, you know? <laughs> like one or the other otherwise otherwise you're going to screw this business nobody's going to listen to us about health and fitness <laughs> yeah, if, yours, <laughs> if yours continues to go up and up <laughs> we've got a problem here but it also shows though this is important because Brought you guys are all original. healthy right yeah. you're all in great shape and so what we're looking at is internally not externally yeah. and that's that's why this is so important yeah so. Um, okay. On the inside, not too good. Is, on the inside is what counts. So your you uh, scored better than ten percent of other males that ran this specific lab. Yeah, terrible. And your rate of aging is one point one six, which means for every one year you're aging point one six yeah. faster than that one year. You're faster. I'm losing That's two years. Yeah, I'm losing two months a year almost. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's that is actually the best way to look at it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> when you're when you're aging slower, yeah. you're basically taking off a couple years. Yeah, you're a couple gain, months. You're, gain, you're yes. gaining a month every right. year. Like a I'm losing two months a year. Yeah, right you're losing now. two months. <laughs> you got to get back on track. Um, and then you, you're. I won't go over your epimetabolic index, but it was excellent. So like overall, like health wise, genetics as to predisposed 
uh, all of those look really good. Oh, so that's, so that's right. interesting. So that, that can look all really good, but then I could still have this high biological age. Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Continue so there, explain, well, cause, and here's why they're looking at about seven specific genes for your epimetabolic index in terms of cardiovascular blood pressure, obesity, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but that is not all the, the totality of your current methylation sites. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. one is specific genes that aren't ever going to change. And then the others are, epigenetic sites as Got to what's it. going on in your body right now. Got so it. is that, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this negative mindset because I feel like that's not even a positive thing for me either. It almost sounds like I have all the good genes I need to be healthy and young and yet I'm still But not. it's in your control. Right. But you have the power. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. And uh, so it, well, here's off the air too. I'll share your APOE genotypes and okay. those types of things. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, and we can go through that as well for sure. Okay. Now, does this make people moody if they're- Stupid. If they're, huh? <laughs> <laughs> only after they- <laughs> Only after they read the results. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been in a bad mood for the last 24 hours, <laughs> that's for sure. Not as great. Yes. Now, Slow down. The positive thing is you'll be able to, to you'll be able to drive down these numbers and improve yeah, them. Yeah, we'll give me the secrets. That. Let's go. All right. All right. So that was, those were Adam's results. Next <laughs> up is... Jo oh, no, Doug. It's Sal. Oh, Sal. Oh, yes. Sal is What's, up next. Yeah. Oh, Doug, right. I, do, I, I do want to preface this by saying I have the most kids here. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I'm the only one. Here comes the excuses. Uh, uh, I'm doing pretty good. Does this make him more Neanderthal or less? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can actually give you the results of who's the most Neanderthal. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know that that's one. That's got to be huge. Look at his forehead. You just let me know and I'll give you who was. Oh, that's funny. So, um, Sal, you currently 44 years old and your biological age was 50. Okay. And so, you know, if you look at that, that's a, a plus six, yeah. uh, which is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. You scored better than 10% mm -hmm. of others during this lab and your rate of aging was 1.15, just one one hundredth of a point yeah. less than Adam's. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, at this right. rate, you and I are going to die at the same 10 time. Ten percenters. Right, Look at these exactly. guys. We buried yep. together. Yeah. 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 Good. Very good epimetabolic. Uh, geriatrics over yeah, right as well. Excellent. All right. Yeah. That's Excellent. your consolation prize right there. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> your shit sandwich right there. <laughs> <laughs> Map silver. We'll All right. Let's see. Let's see. By by proxy, we'll say who the winner is. But we'll we'll go to the next person, uh, which is Doug. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, Doug, uh, chronological age of fifty-eight and biological age of sixty-four. So that's plus six, but based on relative age score, it's actually not as high. So if we look at- I was going to say, because my score was like that. So why did you make him win? Because he's older. Yeah. Uh, so based off of his- So when you get age. to his age, you'll be even a little bit higher. Uh, see, that's what I like. I'll be honest. I saw this <laughs> result a few days ago. And I didn't sleep well that night. <laughs> it can stress you out. By the I way, know. that'll make you age faster. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. It's it's like, increasing your score it's like now. like a yeah, vicious uh, cycle here. Deep in REM yeah. sleep. I know. So you scored uh, better, Doug, than 13% of people. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. At your age. And your rate of aging was 1.10. Well, you're only losing 13%. one month a year. 13%? It could be worse. You could be losing two months like yeah. me. Yeah. 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 All right. Adam's always trying to win. The metabolic uh, stuff. Every you, metabolic age was, it was great on yours. The index yeah. on yours was Now, here, here's what's weird about this, Dr. Brawl. Of all the people that I know who seem to be far younger than their age, it's Doug. Yes. Mm. Doug is like way more energy. He's got more energy than all of us. We yeah, go out, yes. if we go out or whatever, he wants to stay out. He wants to do what he's got tons of oh, energy. That he looks young. <laughs> like what <laughs> is right. You know, what's no, like, what's it really is on? just that. Like the, the one thing that he knows, I would he admit, always, he would, he, I mean, Doug is by far the healthiest of all of us and consistent. Yeah. Than us. The one thing though is his Achilles heel is the stress and sleep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which are two of the biggest probably factors with this. We looked yep. at that on the minerals and metals test and we saw that in the stress mood and metabolism. Then we looked at your uh, or ring sleep stats and those were a little yeah. bit less. So it, that's the thing is I'm going to give you like eight or nine things that you can all work on and, okay. and every listener can work on. But for you, you don't need to work on all of them. You need to like really dial in the 80, 20 rule. 80% of the results will come with you most likely with stress and sleep. Okay. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For yeah. sure. And then keep in mind, yeah. um, you have to look at how many people uh, 58 years old are running this specific lab. Oh, that's I true. think the sample size is way smaller. And I think the majority of them are already focused on their health. So you're competing against like- Oh, that's a, a self-selection bias, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so like where the most excuses. people are running, like 30s and 40s are running this lab, I would say. Um, for sure, 50s as well. So I'm not going to say mm. that. But- um, yeah. So anyway, I'm saying that I think you'll be able yeah. to dramatically improve this score for sure. Excellent. I'm going to text my wife. She's into older men. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Justin, Justin, you finally won something. Yes. yes. About oh, time. Oh, finally finally yeah. win something. Big winner. Big winner. Oh, <laughs> What'd you say? All the sleep. Yeah. 
Oh, that's, um, it's, it's, it's key. <laughs> so very, you are uh, chronological age of 43, biological age of 44. And so essentially neck and neck there. And then uh, 50%, 50 percent better. So actually, right there. So, yeah. I'm actually authentically what I am. Yeah, okay. but the test yeah. was taken before. No, you came. no. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So right on. So well, you're going to see that in a second. Your rate of aging. So um, you scored fifty percent better than uh, people of your age who took this lab, and then yours is basically a one for one rate of aging, one point zero two. So like you said, if you put down forty four years old, you would have been a one point zero for your rate of aging. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so right, right on that. Good job, yeah. Justin. Yep. All right. The only um, authentic one here. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> What and you so, see is what you get. Right. And then epimetabolic, yeah. yours is uh -oh. still good, uh -oh. but more towards fat. We want to make sure <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure we're dialing hey, in. Listen to your old man. And running your <laughs> cardiovascular yeah, tests and all those things uh, yeah. to, to just look at all that in advance. All yeah. right. All right. I, I want to know if I'm more Neanderthal. That one interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us the, yeah. All right. So there was only <laughs> one Neanderthal in the group. And oh. I am going to just verify that right now, so I don't. Uh, I don't think skull say, size would tell you that. Uh, hey, yeah. but you know what? The, the the Neanderthals were also supposed to be very intelligent, and there's they lots were. of cool things. They about were them. the hardiest. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah, we know that they could walk around with broken bones and all sorts of yeah. different things, and they did. He does have the have biggest have ankles. By they were far. toughest. Yeah. Look at the size yeah. of the yeah. ankles. Yeah. So nobody was a um, E22, which is um, the apoe genotype, oh, which is an allele 22. But one of you was heterozygous, which means you had one copy of it. You guys want to take a guess who it was? Of, and this is the Neanderthal one. This is the Neanderthal gene. Who had a copy of it? Who only had one copy, not both, but one. Justin. <sighs> okay. I would say, you know, I don't know. I don't know how you would even guess it's, this. I'll just no, say it's, Adam it's impossible. I mean, it's just, it's yeah, just, it's so I mean, I, I know my whole family's from, uh, I mean, I know exactly where they're from because both my parents are from the same region and we did a genetic test of the Middle East. And yeah, so, what does this exactly mean? So what, uh, what It just what means it, you have one of the, so- that means As your ancestor had sex with Neanderthals. One of the yeah. oldest okay. genes that you can have a specific type of protein in allele okay. called your APOE genotype. It's essentially how you process fats and other things in the body. And the people with this gene, actually, they've been shown to not have as many cardiovascular risks except for type 3, which is a very rare hypercholesterol-based uh, uh -oh. syndrome, but not everybody has it. Mm. It's mm. very protective. It's very protective. I can't have this. have this. There's no, I mean, I don't know. It might be me, but my cholesterol is always, yeah. doesn't matter what I eat. I could eat them. I could eat so much saturated fat, whatever. My cholesterol mm -hmm. always measures real good. So I, maybe that's Weren't, not me. Uh, the Neanderthals were found mainly in like the northern regions. Northern right? Europe. Like the, yeah. yeah. I so that's, that's, that's why I guess me. I yeah. think it's Justin. It's mm. Adam. Adam. Yes. Wow. I said Adam early. Dang. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. No He's way. Got one copy. Wow. So can't win them all, but I got some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a hey, if you can have one, it's a great one to have. Uh, that's yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Your so ancestors it's, didn't it's invent advanced tools. Uh, <laughs> long time. They, uh, <laughs> 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 they just started bringing we'll back those Geico commercials as well. You know, it's like, yeah, right on. <laughs> it's so good. This looks like my uncle a little bit. You know, what I'm so easy a caveman can figure it <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. I, when yeah. I was watching, I was watching football last week, and they they brought those back, and I was like, oh, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's pretty. Wow. Funny. Interesting. So it's protective. Huh. I Very mean, protective. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other positive things about uh, having that? Uh, typically pretty balanced in terms of the, like I said, the lipid profile, yeah. mm -hmm. um, far less chance for Alzheimer's dementia. Oh, yeah. wow. And, Good for you. Um, Lots yeah, of same-sex attraction I read about this. <laughs> <laughs> Can't verify that, but uh, <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> they had to stay warm. <laughs> That's why they died yeah. off. All right, let's hear that. Let's hear all the things in order of the hacks that we should that be we doing. Can't yeah. Do yeah. 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 So what, are the, what are the big, what are the 80%? I want to reverse this, yeah. So when we're, when we're thinking about what causes us to age faster or age slower. It, I've really gone in depth on the research on this. I mean, there's great gerontologists that really study this, um, that spend their lives on this. And my job is to run the labs, assimilate it, and then actually use it in practice. And so um, there is diet, there's exercise, there's environmental toxins, such as the heavy metals we spoke about. There's certain medications, drugs, and alcohol. There is overall mental health. There's nutritional supplements that we know now will slow the rate of aging. And then there's also the microbiome. Mm. And then the biggest factor that we've talked about before, sleep is a huge factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's huge. Now what supplements, because I know people are like, what supplement, even though that's probably the least impactful, what supplements right. slow this down? Yeah, so I'm happy to go through all of them. We can, oh, oh, good. We, we, we jump to the supplements, though. So there, I teach something, and so I teach this in something called high performance health, and I 
tier supplements into four tiers. So a lot of people like to jump to four to the fourth tier. So the fourth tier, fourth tier is things like PQQ for the mitochondria. There are things like nicotinamide mononucleotide yeah. or nicotinamide riboside that are great. There's trans resveratrol. Then there's extra special things like spermidine. There's fisetin. Um, there's other factors that we can use that we know help to remove what are called senescent cells. Mm. So there's there's a few different ways in which we age. There's like 11 different factors, but it really comes down to what's called the soma, the disposable soma theory on aging. I know we, t- we chatted about this, I think like just briefly on a time before that I was on, but what it essentially means is that you don't really see aging until you start to get to your like somewhere in your mid thirties to maybe forties for some people. And the reason is that during uh, early years in adolescence, you are ensuring that you can create biological life, that you're healthy, hearty, Mm -hmm. sound, fertile. And then once you're past really reproductive-based age, it's built into our body that then it does not care as much about your hormones and vitality and then it starts to deteriorate on a more rapid scale. Right. So we see that typically between, that's why they say like, oh, it's all downhill. Not really. Um, somewhere between 40 and 65, it's this giant gap of when the body starts to then uh, break down at a faster degree. And it's only because um, in the background, when you're younger, your body is not taking care of all the other processes that it needs to, because your body can't do everything at once. So like, let's say you're getting high levels of heavy metals and you're not sleeping and you're not eating well and you're playing sports. Your body's like, yeah, okay, but we're still going to keep producing lots of cortisol, testosterone, dopamine, norepinephrine. And then your body after a while says, oh, we can't produce as much of those anymore. And we have all this inflammation that's been happening in the background and it's not able to balance it. So your mitochondria become weaker. So your mitochondria produce ATP and energy, but what they also help to do is balance levels of inflammation in your body. Mm. And the more antibiotics you take, the more viruses and chronic disease you get, the weaker the mitochondria you get, which then can't balance the inflammation. Got it. So now mm. the inflammation's un- unchecked and it's also destroying your mitochondria. So your body gets so much weaker with age. Then we have something called senescent cells. Senescent cells are basically, they're, they're called zombie cells. They're cells that are no longer functioning, but they didn't get the sign and the signal to create what's called apoptosis, which is basically its own program cellular death. And so that's, it's a good thing. You don't want all the cells in your body replicating all the time. We get cancer, cancer. right? Exactly. So these things then are eliminated. Well, you have cells in your body that are never eliminated. The more senescent cells you have, the more inflammation creates wrinkles in the skin, um, hair loss, grain of the skin, or not grain of the skin, but grain of the the hair, uh, and the body begins to break down. So some of these supplements help to remove senescent cells and their topical creams as well. um, While the other nutritional supplements help with mitochondria, help with balancing inflammation, help with what's called the citric acid cycle, like NMN, one of the reasons why it's so popular, or vitamin B3, is because it literally gives you back energy for the mitochondria. So I've taken NMM, I've taken injectable NMM, I've done all, and I felt nothing. I felt zero from it, but would I still show on a test that I'm taking it? And Yes, okay. that's the thing. None of those I can say are a dramatic boost unless your body has poor mitochondria in the function right. in the first place. Like you might have, let's say a thousand mitochondria per typical cell. Your heart cells have like 5,000. You can actually get tremendous benefit from doing things to boost the mitochondria if you are on the lower side in the first place. Got it. Besides that, they are great to, that's why I call them t- tier four supplements. Uh-huh. You need to do all of your, your daily activated multi, your omega-3s, good probiotic, enzyme, like do all, that's, that's what's most important so that you can also absorb all the nutrients your food. Then you can move down to like a creatine, uh, like other factors there, magnesium, calcium, mm-hmm. zinc. Then after that, okay, a little bit more specialized. What might be more specialized? Collagen support. All of those are probably still more important than taking the specialty ones. Now, having said that, they're still important. Now, right? how, do, how does how do all those supplements rank to using the infrared sauna and like a juve light in, com- in comparison? Yeah, that that's the great point because it's not just about supplementation. So you want to go through these and you want to start with your nutrition, your stress, and your uh, nutrition, stress, and sleep. So if I say like, hey, what can we work on? That's the most important. That's it. Nutrition, stress, and sleep. Does fatty yes. acid 
profile, because I remember we did a test with you a while ago where I my omega three ratio was a little off, and yes. I needed to to to, reduce, to to increase my omega three yes. intake. You told me to take uh, an omega three that was higher in DHA. It was one of the products that higher guys, EPA than DHA. EPA, That's sorry, correct. yes, yes, yep, absolutely. Um, would that reduce my biological age? Absolutely. Oh, yes. I see. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what we're looking at, and this is actually so this is the easiest way to explain biological aging. You have more oxidative stress in your body then you essentially have antioxidants, Got whether it. naturally made or from the environment that can squelch, squelch all of this free radical damage. Got it. So it's like it's unchecked oxidative stress from advanced glycation end products, from over-exercise or under-exercise um, that enable your body to maintain equilibrium. Okay, you might not know the answer to this, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway because I don't know who else would ask. I do know that um, I recently have quit using cannabis completely and I used it on a relatively regular basis. And I know it does affect uh, the stages of sleep. So it can help mm -hmm. people go to sleep, but it f doesn't make your sleep as as good. Yes. And I would say Adam and I were probably the heaviest users of cannabis. Could that be a contributor to faster aging? And Because I did read a study once that did say that people who use cannabis have accelerated biological age as well. Could it be the sleep? I believe that it is, and that's due to Dr. Amon's research. Oh. Because Dr. Like, it's hard to find a whole lot of people that have done more research in the brain than Dr. Amon. And so he found this, and I, so I did a whole podcast on this. And again, I love, I believe a rising tide lifts all boats. I love giving credit where credit's yeah. due. And so he does brain scans, but again, you can go to him for Alzheimer's. You can do a full body MRI. But what he found, he compared to alcohol, he compared alcohol, which we know damages the brain. For sure. We know for sure. For a fact. We, he compared that against cannabis and cannabis was worse for the brain than alcohol. In terms of aging. In terms of aging. Yeah. Yeah. The brain wow. and the body. So, so if it's this, aging oh, the brain, wow. it's aging the body. This may be why you and I, because you and I use most cannabis. Yeah. You know, and mm. I know it affects sleep and negatively mm. as well. I mean, that's how I use it is mm -hmm. before bed too. So wow. yeah. that sucks. I actually, so I'm still an advocate of um, cannabinoids and CBD. Sure. I'm still an advocate. I'm an advocate of THC for certain individuals. Yeah. But it's one of those, I say, use it maybe for 12 to 16 weeks to get you off or through whatever you're going through, like challenge wise in your life right now, whether it's sleep or inflammation yeah. or whatever, but then only as needed. So I still use it, but I use it as needed. Yeah. So like, let's say I'm just am, I'm stressed out because I've got all sorts of like life going on. Yeah. I'll, I'll use it. Yeah. Like I have no issues with that. That's I just, I just use came, it ongoing. I just came off of almost three months. It's like two, two, two and a half months of completely cold turkey and off. And then since then I've reintroduced it and I've, that's what I'm trying to be more like. Hmm. Eh, it's not, I don't feel like I need it. It's not a stressful day. I, I, like, I noticed that uh, now, cause now it's been a while that I've been off. Cause you get that withdrawal. We get these really weird, vivid dreams, but now I'm back to normal, but hmm. I dream now. I remember what, using cannabis, uh, I never would remember my dreams because I think it affects that phase of sleep. Phase of the REM. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're not getting as much REM sleep, uh, which you're not typically getting with alcohol or cannabis, then you're not getting that those deeper dream-based states, which is, that's the restorative part essentially of the mind, helps reduce anxiety the next day, mm -hmm. overwhelm, uh, irritability. All of those things are tremendous. There's one more thing I, I wanted to say along those lines uh, with that is that, again, anything that's good for us, can be negative if taken too far. Of course. That's basically just of it. Course. And and actually taking it um a oral version of cannabis is most likely better than smoking it. Of I course. want to state that too. Because yeah, the course. smoke is oxidative yeah. in and of itself. Yeah. And then I would help people transition off of cannabis or alcohol with sleep by using a product called Adrenal Sooth, which has um, phospholocerine, yeah. which reduces cortisol. It's an amazing product. Just great clinical research came out this. If you want to hear it, I'll go over it. Um, it contains ashwagandha, L-theanine, and a few others. So we use that with full-spectrum magnesium with a liquid melatonin. And then so we're we're off of then the cannabis, and then we, well, we actually reduce the dosage so that we don't stop at cold turkey. And then we reduce those other supplements as well as able. Wow. What, what was the data on uh, phosphatidylserine you were saying? So this is actually on ashwagandha. Oh, ashwagandha, it was sorry. A, um, it was a, a meta-analysis of nine studies mm -hmm. on ashwagandha. And I said, listen, if you're stressed, yes, I believe in journaling. I believe in meditation. I believe in all those things. But I remember back in the day when I was, every time I would meditate, I was so exhausted, I would just fall asleep. And when I would journal, I'm like, 
I don't really believe any of this. Like I was just, cause I was so stressed sure. out like back in my early twenties. And so sometimes supplementation really does help. Mm -hmm. Like it helps you get to a spot that you right. need to be. So here's what they found over nine studies. And I, I won't take you through each of the nine. I actually did a, a podcast on all nine and it showed anywhere from 250 milligrams to 600 milligrams a day reduced plasma levels or salivary cortisol by 23 to 30%. That's massive. Which is unbelievable. Massive. Right? Yeah, because you're not looking to take it to zero. Like yeah. then you wouldn't have cortisol. No, like, that's not a good thing. You need it. So it's an adaptogen that truly works to help people just take the edge off stress. Wow. It's now, tremendous. Diet wise, besides healthy, which we, there's you know, kind of broad category, do we see less oxidative stretch stress when someone is uh, in a ketogenic state versus one where they're using glycogen? Just because of the process of producing glycogen and all that is more oxidative, or am I just shooting in the dark here? It's, I think it's a good theory, but that has not held up yet. Okay. Okay. What's held up the most right now is still a Mediterranean diet. That's why if you read um, Dr. Neer's work or um, uh, David Sinclair's work or any any of like the gerontologists in the space, they're saying, they're not saying that you can't eat meat. You can Absolutely. They're saying eat uh, Volta Longo, eat fish a few times a week. What you want to do though is balance it with polyphenols. Right. That's the biggest thing is that people are not getting enough fruits and vegetables, just brightly colored Olive things. oil is a really good source, right? And olive oil high, is fantastic. High quality, yeah. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, I, I'm recent, recently, I've, I'm, I'm going ketogenic, but this is all just for um, mental reasons and I'll do it every once in a while. So I don't yes. stay there, but I use a lot of olive oil, mm -hmm. uh, it, when I'm going ketogenic, just to bump my fat. So good. That's I good have news. no issues with people doing a cyclic ketogenic diet using mainly olive oil and avocado that's as do. their predominant fats mm -hmm. for about three to four weeks. Yeah. Like that's, that's typically like the maximum that I would say, because uh, it's not, it's not all, you know, rainbows, unicorns, and no, sunshine. Like no. there's downsides to it as well. Yeah. I just noticed cognitive, I get sharp with yes. it. But after about a month or two, then I tend to come out of it. So yeah, without a doubt. And I think the goal is metabolic flexibility. That's right. Mm. You can go with fats, you can go without carbs. That's you can, right. Like you're able to handle it unless you have a specific event and then you're training for that event and you can be more fat adapted or more, you know, uh, towards a glucose. Yeah. yeah we diet. recently had a trainer course launch and that's why I did it. It was for the mental sharpness. And so nice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And even people who are not a keto J keto based diet, I will say we don't use them in our practice. If you add specific exogenous ketones, it does actually help seem to work, mm -hmm. you know, as well. So yeah, without a doubt. I mean, even if we don't use it in our practice, cause you don't need to use all things like there's different ways to get well, right. There's different ways to get results. Mm -hmm. Um, and so everybody has like a methodology, but that is for sure one that works. Cool. Another one I wanted to add is just specifically on the brain. I think that this is really important. Um, it's called BDNF brain derived yeah. neurotropic factor. So we're starting to hear more and more about this because Typically, the more BDNF, it's almost like an inverse relationship. More BDNF, less oxidative stress in the brain, less likelihood of Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm -hmm. Because if, and I know we talked about this before, but I would talk about this every show if I could. It's people are living to 74 to 77 years old with the heart disease, the high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's. So yeah. those are the five reasons why people die essentially. So it's not like 70s. they're healthy and they die. It's like they get sick, 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 sick. For like 20 die. years to right. 30 years, right? right? But if you don't get any one of those five, the next causes of mortality are literally COPD, which is almost unheard of in people that don't smoke, or chemical irritants, uh, or emphysema, uh, which is basically a version. And then it's it's literally accidental death. Yeah. kidney-based mm -hmm. issues. And the kidney-based issues typically come from high blood pressure and the medications you're put on or type 2 diabetes. And then the the literally the injuries are motorcycle accidents and falling off your roof. Like, <laughs> yeah. like legitimately. Yeah, because if you're 75 and you feel healthy as hell, yeah. you're going to buy a motorcycle or fix your own <laughs> <Right. laughs> Well, the, the thing is though, you get at least an extra 10 to 15 years of life expectancy if you don't get those five. I was just going to say, I've mm -hmm. read data on this and they say, if you've made it to the, whatever the current life expectancy is, and you don't have these major issues, you can yes. expect to live a lot longer. A hundred percent. With, yeah. But also better quality of life, right? So there's health span and there's lifespan. And I, sorry, I skipped over that. Lifespan is how long you live. But for the most part, people are diseased. They have a chronic based right. disease yeah. in their forties and then they are on medication then for the rest That's of their life. Right. That's our typical yeah. population. Right. Right. It's usually statin drug or it's on even things like Prilosec for acid reflux, yeah. right? Well, we know yeah. that can lead to Barrett's Got esophageal cancer. Yeah. 
uh, or it's high blood pressure, or it's type 2 diabetes. And the likelihood that you have multiple of those is very high because once you get one, you medicate for it, and then you pretend like it's not an issue, and then it, the you inflammation manifests somewhere yeah. else. And then cancer is the only wild card, and the only thing I can say is you try to do everything right, but you run your full body scans, and you find it early before it's stage three or stage four when you have a higher likelihood of being able to treat it, either naturally or conventional medicine, or a combination of both. Mm. And I can share some great studies on that as well. Yeah, strength, uh, strength training um, will reduce your all-cause of cancer by like something like 20-something percent, just by building more muscle. That was a How recent, many, uh, what, I'd love to hear the research on that. How many times a week was it? Do you know, and what type of exercises? Oh, it, you're, you're two or three days a week of strength training. Wow. Yeah, we're, we're talking about bodybuilders or yeah. anything like that. It was just having the muscle, because muscle seems to be protective against cancer. Yes, 100%. And it's also, I would love to see too, it's like if you're doing that, are you also doing these things right as well. Right. But in and of itself, muscle is important because what does it do? It helps strengthen the mitochondria, yeah. helps balance the immune system to a greater degree. Unless I'm So like, there's a lot of benefits to that. So um, one of those things is just like you said, two to three days a week can improve biological age uh, for strength training, not overdoing it, overtax the nervous system or too much breakdown. But believe it or not, and this is one that I don't love, but I'm recommitting for this year to do it is cardiovascular zone two yeah. cardio. And it's not a little bit. It's actually like an hour and a half a week of zone two cardio is is kind of your baseline for that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a brisk walk, not a regular walk, but a brisk walk or uphill incline walking um, is is essentially that zone two cardio that is maybe boring or so, but is dramatically beneficial for your biological age and rate of aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. even more so for telomeres because tel telomeres is not the end all be all, but it was one of the like five things that was a, a big one to improve overall telomere length and, and methylation sites was aerobic based capacity. And you said 90 minutes? Uh, a week? A yeah. Week. Uh, that would be the minimum. It's more like 150, like 30 minutes or so five days a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. So it's a good amount. Okay. You could do it not every day. You could do it every other day. But they've also found this. If you walk 8,500, 7,500 seems to be the minimum to 10,000 steps a day, you're, you reduce all-cause mortality by over 23%. Wow. Yeah. So that's a pretty fa fantastic mm -hmm. number for people just to walk. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, just I mean, that's act, a good, that's a good point to bring general. because I've heard people ask questions like, what's this arbitrary 10,000 step number? Does it even matter? Does it make a difference? And that, right there, just right yeah. there. States. It is somewhat arbitrary because again, it depends on the individual. It depends course. what else. If you're strength training two to three days a week as well, do you really need a 10? Oh, you might be okay with 7,500. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on what are your genetics for your cardiovascular issues as yeah. well. Um, you know, so there's a lot that goes on, how many calories you need to burn, even though it's a slow burn. Uh, but they also found it wasn't even every day. It was five days a week or more. Oh, wow. So 10,000, so 7,500 to 10,000 steps, five days a week or more. So you don't have to feel bad about missing a day. I, I have a question for you. Cause if you look at longevity online, what you typically will find is hormone therapy, yeah. growth hormone, testosterone and women, they'll do estrogen, progesterone. Have you seen those things being added affecting age or is that more of a just you feel different type of thing feel different and yes in terms of health span but we have not seen any correlation that i've seen in terms of lifespan and Got i'm actually it. waiting for that yeah because we just don't know yet yeah. we don't know if it's going to extend life or there is a theory that the more hormone you're taking right now the more you're covering up going back to the disposable sure. soma theory sure are you covering up the deficiencies or toxicities you may have that would ordinarily make you feel like, listen, I got to do something. That's right. So that's, that's- Have you seen a change yeah. biological age? Like, what, would you have people who are like, oh, I went on testosterone replacement there, I went on growth hormone, whatever, and then you see a change there? Or does it we, we need more people to see that. Got I don't it. have that data right now. Got yeah, it. I'd it, like to it, see it. It'd be hard, too, to tease out uh, the the behaviors because of that, too, though. Of course. Right? Yeah, like, more because, testosterone, more energy. Right, more right. Exercise. I mean, because I remember what I felt like with really low testosterone. I just did not want to move. I didn't want to exercise. Mm -hmm. Like, And then all of a sudden, balancing that out. Now I'm like eager to lift and yeah. more active. And so that's kind of be tough to try to tease out. Yeah. It's fascinating because mental health is one of the issues with either um, increased aging or less. They found that people who oh, lived thinking. to be 100 years old, they were just less stressed about life, mm -hmm. like legitimately. Yeah. They didn't have the perfect diet, although yes, they had you know, 
the right amount of fiber and they typically, they did things that were good, right? They did some intermittent fasting. We even talked about that, you know, 12 hours mm -hmm. to 16 hours a day. They didn't overeat. That was a big thing. They mainly walked. They didn't necessarily do weight training. I think it's important because if you break your hip at 70 years old, the likelihood you go downhill real fast is highly not, likely. Yeah. And so those things are important. Uh, but mental health is a huge factor in how you overall view life and you view your happiness. Yeah, yeah that's so a big one. Mm -hmm. Hormones is part of that. Uh, my goal is to help people is naturally for as long as I can. And then when needed, as we spoke about before, you can augment and you take it multiple times per week, which is what now finally it's happening in the industry rather than like once a month or twice a month. And then you get this high level and then you see it drop down. So you're kind of like um, getting this smaller amount throughout the day, how your body would normally produce it rather than a large amount and then come back down, mm. which could lead to red blood cells issues, coagulation if the, if the amount is super physiological. Interesting. So it's always about finding that right level for you. And um, yeah, it's about, I mean, it really is about balance and bioindividuality. How often do you recommend someone take this test? You said every six months? I would say you can safely do this every four to six months. And then in the future, we'll talk about three years from now. I think you'll be able to do it about every 12 weeks. Like you'll be able to really wow. get results faster. So I'm doing mine every three to four months because what I recommend for, for everybody out there is that you don't change everything at once. Change two variables. And so you can actually see if it's working. That's right. Because okay. you have your whole life to be able to like look at this lab. Yeah. And so what I recommend is, you know, pick two that you know that you can actually accomplish. Not maybe that you need that to do, but pick two that you can accomplish. Yeah, sure. Supplements could be one, but maybe it's intermittent fasting. Maybe it's diet. Maybe it is working just on your sleep, um, just on reducing stress. And then, okay, see, how does that move the needle? But you have to keep in mind that and, and you, cause I've actually seen it. So I, the first time I ran, um, well, as I was improving, I was, I was like 0.86 and then I was, um, like a little bit lower. And then I was a 0.69, which was phenomenal. I was like, okay, this is great. But then I ran it again and I actually was more stressed uh, and I wasn't, um, doing the same steps in cardiovascular that I wanted to be doing. And I went up to a 0.71 and you could say, oh, well, maybe that's just the inaccuracy could be right. But I, I wasn't as dialed in dialed it back in four months later, took it 0.67. And I went from a biological age of like 36 to then the, my lowest, which was 32. And so these things really do matter. And what I say is dial in the biggest ones, which is sleep, stress, and nutrition. If you can first, just pick one and then continue to work on it. And then just keep in mind, if you just had a newborn baby, you just did all these things, yeah. you probably don't test. Yeah, <laughs> unless yeah. you unless you want to see. Well, that. you want to see where we are, what's, well, what's yeah. happening. You can actually see the net. Yeah, you can see that yeah. this is a negative. Yeah, result. Yeah. And where do people get this one? So we set up a link. It's called stephencabral.com slash bioage. That'll be a discount for your community. Okay. And there are, like I said, there's four different companies that do this. The reason why I recommend this first biological age that we went through is because it is maybe not as liberal with your overall biological age, but it's going to be it uses Dr. Stephen Horvath's clock. So he's a very uh, mm -hmm. well-renowned gerontologist. Probably great to have. Uh, he actually would have to zoom in because I don't even know that he lives in the US. Um, but it looks at your APOE genotype and your MTHFR. And that's information that you absolutely should have to base your nutrition off of it and your overall lifestyle. And the other biological age tests don't have it. And it's hmm. Stephen Cabral, S-T-E-P-H-E-N and then C-A-B-R-A-L.com forward slash bio age. Yes. This test was pretty easy to take, by the way. So people listen, it's a blood test, but it's easy. You did it, we did it ourselves here at the studio, right? You did a simple finger prick. Right? Very easy. Mm -hmm. yep. Very easy simple finger prick. prick, very little blood. And again, they're just using those specific cells, looking at the methylation points on those cells, taking your average and then showing you what you can improve. So awesome. yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Well, now, now I know that when, we, when we're when we all somewhere and there's not enough seats for everybody to sit down, I'll give Adam a seat because you always give the older. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we should do a follow-up, you know, it's on months now. Or no, no, it's on. Hey, it's <laughs> on now. It's on yeah, now. And we just keep, so yeah, like I said, my, uh, my colleagues and I, we dork out on this and we try to, you know, yeah. beat each other in terms of biological age. Cause if you're doing that is actually, it's, so it's fun to try to beat the system and beat your own body, but also just, you know, have fun and compare with others. Yeah, so that's, that's right. Awesome. Yeah. No, I think yeah. it's a healthy competition this is for all of us. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for coming on. Thank my you. pleasure. Awesome. Thank you.